Because today we're talking about a bunch of random, just a different bunch of bullshit. So let's talk about it. First up, we have a video of drones being used to start forest fires. Interesting. That's not cool. I mean, it is kind of cool. A flamethrower coming out of a drone used to launch embers or whatever that is. Long range kerosene. Who knows? This is supposedly being uh, a video of Antifa starting it, or we have some arsonry maybe being blamed on Antifa. It's all just a bit much. It's kind of hard to say. Was it laser beams from outer space? Was it laser beams from within the firmament? There's so many different theories. But we do have this video. I'll link to it so you can look at it for yourself. But there, it is possible to use a drone to start forest fires, and this appears to be the landscape of the West Coast. But I don't know. So we'll just have to look and see in the future. Moving on. Is UBI coming to Canada? Guaranteed basic income tops policy priorities for Liberal Caucus at upcoming convention. Caucus is calling on government to adopt the idea for consideration in November. Guaranteed basic income for all Canadians. So basically, they, it's the top priority, and they're going to have to consider it in November. And since the, the government of Canada is very liberal, odds are, and they've already talked about it, odds are good that they might actually vote in to make this happen. So Canada could be experiencing the, one of the first major Western world UBIs that I'm aware of. I could be wrong, other countries could have done this already. Uh, I'm still on the fence about it, uh, I'm not really quite sure, I'd have to have somebody really explain it to me in a way that makes sense. And if we tax like giant, if we tax billionaires and then we give them money downward, that would make sense in a, in a way, a roundabout way, that's an oversimplification of course, but that makes sense to me. But we also don't want to just encourage people to just be able to do it's going to the streets and riot because they're getting paid. It's you know all the un unemployment of all these people getting caught rioting. There needs to be checks and balances for whatever we do. I don't think we need to just completely get rid of tech and get rid of the money and then go backwards. I think whatever we're doing, we're going into a brave new tomorrow, a brave new future. So yeah, I'll, I'll link to that too. We have this. So uh, this is interesting. For the documents in the Floyd case, the defense is asking for any and all files pertaining to Floyd's cooperation as an informant. For the Minneapolis police or FBI. Interesting. I had heard that theory about how George Floyd was potentially a, an FBI asset, an informant. But the fact that the defense is asking for that information, it's I think it might a lot of this stuff might come to light. We got a lot of stuff coming to light in 2020. Uh, by the way, the Mueller case, we have uh, all the people involved in that phony witch hunt against Donald Trump with the Russia hoax, or whatever that was, all their phones conveniently got wiped. It was an accident, so we can't check their phones. It's, uh, I think, uh, let's look at the, t the Trump tweet about it. Let's look at DJT. Donald Trump, let's see what he's got to say about it. All that time and money spent, turns out the Mueller investigation was a total scam. Oh, we have some more other tweets like this one, for example. Well, first, before we look at this one. Alert, so now we find out the entire Mueller hit squad illegally wiped their phones clean just prior to the investigation of them, all using the same really dumb reason for this accident. Just like crooked Hillary smashing her phones with a hammer and deleting her emails. It has now been determined that the Mueller scam should never have been set up in the first place. There were no grounds. It was all an Ill illegitimate witch hunt and a big price must be paid. How different my life would have been if this fraud on America was never committed. I think uh, the one that I saw in the top comments was, drop the hammer, Donnie. <laughs> We've been hearing about this case for far too long with nothing really happening. It's kind of a shame. It relates to Flynn and, and General Flynn, and yet still it appears as if he's, his case is not finalized after it being pretty much proven that he was... Uh, screwed over. So let's move on though. It was, we're gonna hear from that for sure before November. Let's move on. We have this. This is a tweet that violates Twitter's rules about civic and election integrity. However, Twitter has determined that it may be in the public's interest for the tweet to remain accessible. 
North Carolina. To make sure your ballot counts, send sign and send in or send it in early. When polls open, go to your polling place and see if it was counted. If it wasn't counted, vote. Your signed ballot will not count because your vote has been posted. Don't let them illegally take your vote away from you. And so this, uh, some people are saying Trump is telling people to vote twice. Well, not really. He's saying to vote early and then go to the poll and see if your vote was counted. And if it wasn't counted, then vote. So, uh, but of course, Twitter has to do what it's got to do. Twitter and uh, Facebook and whatever else, maybe YouTube, they're all going to try to do their very best to influence this election. Of course they will, because they know that whoever is going to be in charge of the next four years is going to determine how lenient they are on big tech. And we know Donald Trump is probably not going to be so lenient. He said some things. And I'm sure they know what he said because they, well, Donald Trump has the Patriot Act. These big tech people have the servers, so they, they also know. So moving on, so here you can see all the smoke from the California fires in the west coast. A lot of it coming down here, but a lot of it getting sucked into a tropical storm in the Pacific. You can see it getting sucked in here. Now we have reports of a, a storm coming up like Laura or something like that, coming up in uh, the, the Gulf again. Supposed to hit Louisiana on Wednesday, they can't just Chill. It's like it's like the PGA Tour down in the Gulf. But we got this is happening. This is just kind of cool. If this turns into something because of all this extra smoke, that would be horrific. A hurricane filled with like all that carbon and whatever it is, all the carcinogens in the air. So that's just something to consider, look out for. But this is just random news. Let's move on. So Tulsi going QAnon is the least surprising thing to happen in 2020. Now in in today's world. QAnon is just, you can call anyone you don't like, anyone who says something that you disagree with, they're QAnon, they're a right-wing conspiracy theorist. Now this has very little to do with QAnon at all, but here Tulsi Gabbard says, Netflix child porn cuties will certainly whet the appetite of pedophiles and help fuel the child sex trafficking trade. One in four victims of trafficking are children. It happened to my friend's 13-year-old daughter. Netflix you are, and she goes on. And this nice, beautiful check mark, Melissa Ryan, you can tell how gorgeous she is, calls her a QAnon, Tulsi going QAnon, that if you're calling out Netflix for cuties, you're a part of QAnon. Which is just a lot of weird Venn diagram gymnastics. We're just going to say this, this is like this and like this. Well, what if the guy who created QAnon drinks milk? If I drink milk, does that make me QAnon? That's nonsense. I think you don't have to be a part of a of an esoteric uh, news organization drop or whatever it is you want to call QAnon, a news source, to be able to understand and identify that Cuties on Netflix is absolutely some gross, disgusting nonsense. Now people in the comments are like, you know, have you actually watched the movie and blah, blah, blah. I get it. I haven't actually watched the whole movie. I've only seen scenes and parts. I get it. That's, it is a bit unfair of me to just call out this movie without having seen it. However, somebody in my comments said that something awesome, and it's like, it would be like filming your filming like recording yourself abusing animals to make a movie about why abusing animals is wrong. Now, people point out, well, what about murder? There's so much murder in movies. Well, that, we don't think that's bad. That's because the murder in movies is simulated. It's not real. But there's no, they're not doing CGI dance moves. They're actually having girls do these dan these sexually explicit dance moves in front of a bunch of people and recording it. There's, they're not animating it, they're not doing any like camera trickery, it's not implied, it's happening, it's explicit. It would be like if you actually had somebody smoke crack on camera, as Tim Pool pointed out. Like if you're trying to make a video about why crack is bad and you have a bunch of kids smoke crack. Like look, you could make fake crack and they could act but it's this isn't acting. They're not acting like they're doing sexually explicit moves. They are doing sexually explicit moves. But I just wanted to point out that now you're going to get called QAnon if you call out Netflix. That's nothing against QAnon. I mean, QAnon has brought a lot of good things to light, in my opinion. Moving on. This is weird. I don't even really know how much I want to give to this one. I didn't even like look into it. All right, and because of that, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna move on. I just had it up from earlier. This is a bigger story. 
We have a uh, Chinese virologist claims she has proof COVID-19 was made in Wuhan lab. A Chinese virologist who has reportedly been in hiding for fear of her safety has stepped into public eye again to make the explosive claim that she has the scientific evidence to prove COVID-19 was man-made in a lab in China. This chick. Dr. Li Mingyang. Yeah, and I, we've heard this from many people. We've heard this around all over the place. It makes sense, the idea that it was made, you know, that it just so happens that Chinese people eat animals, and it's just a, it's a ticking time bomb waiting to happen with these bats. I don't buy it. It's all just so convenient. Uh, I think somebody came on a Joe Rogan's podcast one time talking about how he believed it looks like it was made in a lab just from, the, from what we know about it. So we have this, uh, we'll see what happens with this, with this Chinese virologist. We'll see. We will see. That's pretty much like the theme of all these stories. We will see. We'll see what happens. Moving on. Uh, we got a dude with a chainsaw, Antifa, and a lady. We're, we're not going to like really go into it too much just because it's, it's a bit much. But there's a protest on the highway, and this guy brought a chainsaw out and started to threaten some Trump-supporting women. Big shock. All right, so here's a verified list of what of the timeline of COVID in case you want to say Donald Trump didn't do anything. December 31st, China announces their investigated pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan. January 14th, the World Health Organization declared no evidence of human-to-human -human transmission of virus. January 17th, CDC sent 100 staffers to specific U.S. airports to screen travelers who'd been in Wuhan. CDC activated its emergency operations center. January 29th, Trump creates coronavirus task force before it even had a name. January 30th, State Department issues a do not travel warning to China less than one month after initial announcement from China. Democrats pro proclaim it to be racist and xenophobic. January 30th, the WHO announced the coronavirus as a public health emergency of international global concern. So before the WHO even announced its global concern, the administration was working on his response for almost a month and had already established a presidential task force. Then on the 31st, Trump bans travel from Wuhan. And then press cites experts claiming it was counterproductive. Of course, now, we know this, this timeline. If you were paying attention at all, this is obvious. But of course, uh, we're just going to say that Donald Trump, this is the Trump virus. It's not the Chinese virus, the Trump virus. A bit nonsense. Moving on. This is old news. I just thought it was interesting to put it out in this perspective. Moving on. There's that ballot video, Twitter, and then we see them get attacked there. We got other news, though. We got Afghanistan and the Taliban are talking about peace. What? Afghanistan peace talks open in Qatar, seeking end to decades of war. Talks between Afghan government and Taliban open in Qatar. What? This is crazy. What is going on in the Middle East? What's in the water? I'll tell you, it's probably not what's in Flint's water. But what's going on? It's not in what's in Oregon's water. That's good news. This is great. More peace in the Middle East. Tupac would be happy. Well, let's, uh, let's take it all the grain of salt, of course, you know. It is what it is. Can't be what it's not. So we'll move on to our final story. So even Ted Cruz is talking about cuties. So Ted Cruz and a bunch of people sent a letter to William Barr, Bill Barr, the DOJ. I urge the Department of Justice to investigate the production and distribution of this film to determine whether Netflix, its executives, or the individuals involved in the filming and production of Cuties violated any federal laws against the production and distribution of child pornography. Cruz adds his name to a growing and bipartisan list of Washington lawmakers who have criticized the film. Among others condemning the film are Senator Tom Cotton, Jim Banks, Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. So yeah. We will see what happens with that. What is this? Who are, whoa, who are these people? So yeah, that's good. Uh, it's a bipartisan issue. Child pornography on Netflix. It's bizarre that it's even there, but Netflix keeps defending it. Tells haters to actually watch film. <laughs> no. Not gonna do it. Uh, yeah, I, if, if what they say is in it, is in it, I don't want to watch that. I mean, Brokeback Mountain almost won an Oscar. I'm still not going to watch that, and that's like not even bad, relatively. <laughs> this seems illegal, this movie. It's borderline illegal. 
Brokeback Mountain is just something I just don't care for, personally. So yeah, that wraps up today's little news segment of what we got in the news segments. So yeah, if you support, uh, if you like this content, you support investigative independent journalism, you can check out the description. I have a Patreon. And also in the description, I'll have links to all this stuff. So yeah, as always, take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Stay vigilant. Stay woke, man. Stay woke. Look out for the sleep paralysis demons. But also, call your mom. Call your dad. Call your family. Call your siblings. Call your son. Call your daughter. Whoever it is, call them. Stay connected with people you actually care about because there's a lot of people in the world that I'd, I can't care about. I'm sorry. I just The, the news throws in so much bullshit in my face. And I'm like, care, care, care. Get upset. Get anxious. And I'm like, ah. I'm going to call my mom and talk to her about her day so she's up to. It always makes me feel better. So, take care. Peace.